Hello? Anybody here? Hey everyone, welcome back to my sewing and DIY channel. Today, I'm back with another wardrobe spring cleaning project. In this video today, I'll be showing you my process of refreshing this vintage Saks Fifth Avenue trench coat that I found in a thrift store in Monterey, California back in 2016. Yeah, so I've had this trench coat for a little over five years and I've never worn it. It's just been sitting in my closet and crying quietly since the day I got it. <laughs> so considering the depressing weather forecast that we have in Texas this week, I decided that this is prime time for me to get the coat out and actually get to wear it, style it, enjoy it for a couple more months before spring comes around. Now, I'm not an expert in vintage clothing, but looking at the style of the trench coat and the design of the Saks Fifth Avenue label, I can quite confidently say that this coat is from the 1970s, which is, by the way, the decade that is inspiring the style and aesthetic behind my autumn winter capsule wardrobe sewing project that I have at the moment. So there you go, another motivation for me to get this coat out of the closet and wear it with the rest of my capsule wardrobe. First things first, number one priority was to get this coat washed. I didn't want to send it to a dry cleaner and I just wanted to do it myself at home. But the fact that there was a fur collar attached made it impossible for me to wash it with water. And so to give this coat a fresh new look, I started by removing the stitches, attaching the fur collar to the collar of the trench coat. And also I felt like having a fur collar that's detachable instead of being sewn dead to the trench coat would give me more outfit possibilities with this one coat. So this is how the trench coat looks without the fur collar on. It's definitely a lot more casual. It's for, you know, when I need to walk out in the cold to check the mailbox. And if I feel like I want to be a little bit fancier and go do some grocery shopping, I can pop the fur collar on because grocery shopping is probably the fanciest thing I do these days. Then I decided that I should hand wash the coat and I was really surprised at how dirty the water turned out to be. We have warm lighting in here but the water is positively yellow. <laughs> so yeah, once I figured out how filthy the coat actually was, I dumped the whole thing into my bathtub. This is definitely not a clinically proven way to wash vintage coats but I just feel like it needed a little bit more to kind of dislodge all the debris and dust from I don't know how many decades and get it all off the coat. After the third soak, I decided that it was time for me to put it through a wash cycle in the washing machine and I did that by having the water just lukewarm and having the spin cycle low. After washing, I air dried the coat instead of putting it in the dryer because number one, I am not that adventurous and confident about using it in the dryer. And number two, the humidity was low enough for it to actually be dried in a single afternoon. So while waiting for the trench coat to dry, I started working on the detachable fur collar piece. First of all, I decided to add a new fabric to the back of the collar. I did that by grossly tracing the collar out on brown paper and then cutting a piece of fabric with seam allowance included. The exact amount of seam allowance didn't really quite matter because I knew that I could kind of fold more or less as needed as I pin and sew the fabric onto the back of the fur collar. So I didn't think I would be adding a new fabric backing onto my fur collar, but for my idea of having a detachable fur collar for my trench coat, I will be sewing snap buttons onto this backing here and the collar of the trench coat. Just looking at the original bias binding that's around the fur collar, I just didn't think it would last very long and that they wouldn't withstand the stress of being tugged on repeatedly. After sewing the new fabric to the back of the fur collar, I sewed the snap buttons all along the circumference of the fur collar. And when sewing the snap buttons on, I'm only sewing one edge of the snap buttons and I attach them right on the very edge of the fabric backing. And you'll see why in just a minute. Now if you're thinking about doing something similar to a coat or a fur collar that you have, I suggest doing this only for fur collars that have 
a longer fur because the fur is what helps to conceal the snap buttons that are kind of hanging outside of the edge of the collar. So after sewing one half of the snap buttons onto the edge of the fur collar piece, I sewed the other half of the snap buttons along the collar of the trench coat. What I found really helpful to do was to start from the very center back of the collar of the trench coat and then working my way outwards and having the snap buttons placed together while sewing so I know the fur collar is actually sitting in the correct position on the collar of the trench coat while sewing the snap buttons on. Right, so at this stage I've sewn the snap buttons all around the back of the trench coat and I'm just putting the trench coat on just to see if I actually have to sew all the snap buttons along the inner circumference of the collar. So if I jump, it doesn't come off. It's attached over here like this. So when I have it off, you can't, you don't, you can't see it on the trench coat if I'm just wearing the trench coat on its own. Since having just the snap buttons on the outer circumference was enough for it to be secured onto the collar of the trench coat without falling off while I'm doing jumping jacks, I decided to just remove the snap buttons that I previously sewed onto the inner circumference of the fur collar. And the last couple of things that I did to the coat was mending a couple of areas where the stitches have come undone. And then also there was this weird pulling along the bottom hem right at the front of the coat. I don't know what happened. I think maybe the coat had maybe shrunk a little bit over the years from people washing and drying it or whatnot. The way that I fixed it was really just removing the stitches that were attaching the facing from the main body of the coat and then smoothing it out and then restitching the facing to the main body of the coat again. One final fix that I did for the Saks Fifth Avenue trench coat was to tidy up that really horribly fraying label on the coat. I removed the label from the coat, trimmed up the fraying ends, and applied just enough of fabric glue to prevent future fraying, and then stitch it by hand back onto the coat. Time for a quick mini styling session. One coat, four ways, let's go! I'm pretty happy with how this little coat transformation project has turned out. I always love the ability to style one thing in different ways and this coat is exactly what I love in my wardrobe. I forgot to mention this earlier in the middle of the video but I ended up adding one snap button onto the inner circumference of the fur collar just so I could wear the fur collar and have it wrapped around my neck and closed and not come undone when I'm wearing the fur collar just on its own. Thank you so much for watching my video this week. If you're new to the channel and if you've made it this far into the video, might as well subscribe to my channel and see what else I come up with for the rest of the year. Check back next week for more sewing, DIY and a little bit of fun. See ya! <laughs>